I find that when I'm struggling with my pistol shooting that really it boils down to me being more simple rather than more complex. And at the end of the day, as I've gotten better and better in my pistol shooting, and I'm at a pretty high standard now, I find that when I am struggling, if I go back to the big three, grip the gun, sight the gun, trigger the gun, that I get everything that I need and I learn to shoot better and I can repeat that performance under stress, let me show you how I do it. If you want to keep your shooting skills primed, you have to regularly dry fire. Manus X is the best dry fire tool available to help you to stay sharp all the time. I use it every week. I'm going to start today with a little bit of transparency that I love doing these weekly dry fire and live fire training videos. I've been working on my handgun skills and my carbine skills a ton the last couple of years. And I really enjoy making them because it's documenting my progress. But I also had a, a meeting this last week or, or a training class with a bunch of other YouTubers and uh, media types for Surefire. And one of the interesting things that really came up is how little most people want to get better in their shooting. They want to buy gear. They want to know what the gun is. This is Benvolio, my Grey Guns HKP30. Uh, it's got a Mantis X3 on it. And I'm, as always, appreciative of Mantis for sponsoring these, helping me get better as a shooter. It just is ridiculous to me how few people actually want to improve their shooting. They really just want to have gear and have feel better. So for those of you, the, the couple thousand who watch this and actually work on their skills, God bless you. And I'm so grateful that you are on this journey with me. We are a minority and I appreciate you muchly. Okay, back to the point. When I struggle with shooting, and I do struggle with my shooting just like anybody else, I will go out to the range and I couldn't hit my rear end with both hands if you drew me a map. It does happen and I go back and I go, man, I just can't hit anything today. I just am struggling and every time when I do, I have to stop and go, John, three things you gotta do. It's not that hard. Three things you gotta do. You gotta grip the gun, you gotta sight the gun, you gotta trigger the gun. That's it. There are only three things you gotta do to hit your target every single time. You have to grip the gun because if I didn't grip the gun, let's just say it was floating off in space and I tried to press the trigger, right? Well, that would you know impart some other force and the gun would move, okay? So I have to support it in some way so that I can press this trigger to the place that it's gonna go off. This particular trigger is about a six pound trigger. So it takes at least six pounds of grip in order to keep it where I want. This is not a video on grip. I'm gonna put a card in there, put a link in the description. Make sure you watch the video on the science behind a pistol grip. It's important to grip the pistol correctly. Many times for me, what I said in that video, what I will say again, is when I'm having a hard time is when I'm gripping the pistol up high and not gripping the pistol down low and focusing on my pinkies. So when I'm diagnosing shooting problems, the first thing that I'm gonna do is go, okay, I need to grip this gun with my pinkies better. So I can show you just a little bit. It's a little easier if I show you using the Mantis so you can see the muzzle movements though. So let's use the Mantis and then that way you can see it. I've set the Mantis up to do its thing. Let's set some of this up and we go from here. So if I'm, you know, when I start struggling, what happens is, is I kind of grip the gun at the top and I kind of press out with my elbows and I get this kind of top heavy grip. And then what tends to happen is the gun will creep on me. And you can see that was an 86.4. It's not a bad shot. I mean, I'm not saying that that's not a good thing, but if I'm gripping up tall, what tends to happen there, and of course then I rip off a 97.7, right? Is that what tends to happen is it tends to move and I get 80s like that. But then instead, when I think John, grip the gun front to back with this dominant hand and grip it hard, grip it with that support, with that dominant hand, especially your pinky hard, front to back front back strap, you know, front strap into the back strap, support hand, grip that gun hard and get it side to side with everything you have and put the dot and go. And all of a sudden I start getting 90. So get everything there, grip it together and go. And everything starts coming into the high 90s. Again, anything above 90 is great on the Mantis, anything 95 and above. I don't think the unit can actually really differentiate between a 95 and a 98. Or if it can, it's so minuscule that it's not even um, a measurable metric. So grip the gun first, okay? If you start having problems with that, see, <clears throat> because what goes down is, is that the sights are gonna tell you where the bullet's gonna go every time. But it tells you where the bullet goes the second that the gun goes off. So errors are almost never sighting errors. We can pick up sighting errors on the range really fast. Most people's low left, if they've got that low left Glock push, has nothing to do with the sights. Sighting the gun, especially if you're using something like a red dot, I mean, using a red dot, dot, you know, bullet goes where dot says. Um, but if you're using iron sights, then again, uh, equal height, equal light, put the top of the front sight, on your target or just below it, depending on if you've got a 12 o'clock or a six o'clock hold sight. And, and the bullet will go there if you don't disturb that sight picture until 
the, the trigger is depressed and the gun goes off. Once the gun goes off, once you, you know, by the time you start feeling any recoil, bullets out of the muzzle and, and everything's done. So almost never a problem in sighting. You say, well, where do I put my sights? Equal height, equal light. Make sure the top of the front sights, even with the top of the rear sight, there's equal light between uh, the, you know, the bars of the front sight. Front sight centered inside the notch of the rear sight then you're done with that. So everything else from there is grip and trigger. Of course, what we talked about in the pistol grip video is the fact that I'm isolating this one finger from these three fingers, that's a little bit difficult. So grip the gun like you mean it, and then press the trigger straight to the rear, however that works for you. And it works for you different based on how big the gun is, how well it fits your hand. Do I use the pad of my finger? Do I use the first knuckle of the finger? Guys, press the trigger straight to the rear. Trigger the gun. Trigger the, you know, just trigger the gun straight to the rear. You're trying to press it again back into the back strap. These three fingers are working from the front strap to the back strap. Make this finger work straight from the front strap to the back strap, not gripping around, straight back. These fingers are gripping straight back. This finger presses straight back. So what that leaves us is to grip the gun adequately. And then once we've got that gun gripped adequately, press and trigger the gun straight to the rear. When we do that, we get good shots, shockingly. Press and go. So there we go. Notice I'm just getting really consistent hits with that, which is kind of funny. So let's go look over here and I'll just show you some of these shots. You can see, again, when I'm shooting those 80s, they're just not terrible shots. I'm really paying attention to the yellow. The blue is the lead in, is the time leading up to about, you know, three hundredths of a second before three, um, I'm sorry, about 300 milliseconds, three tenths of a second before we fire. The yellow is the 150 milliseconds before we fire. So the yellow is really where it's important and then the red is the follow through what happens afterwards, which in dry fire shouldn't be much. If you have a lot there, you got problems. So let's look here. So when we get a couple, right? When we get that 97.7, you notice in the yellow, it just stayed nice and true and that's what we wanted. Number three as we go, again, pressed out to the right. Then as we started really gripping the gun like we should, you notice it stays nice and together, nice and together, nice and together, and nice and together. That last one kind of came out and came back. So that's telling me that my grip is doing the adequate thing and I am again pressing straight front to straight rear and making it happen. That's what you want to do. So really what I want to encourage you to do this week is I want to encourage you to uh, just get after the gun and grip the gun, sight the gun, trigger the gun. Just use that mantra. If I'm having any trouble at all, grip the gun, sight the gun, trigger the gun. That's all I need to do. Grip the gun, okay, grip the gun. Front to back, side to side, sight the gun, put the target put under my sights, trigger the gun, press that last finger from the front to the back and rock and roll. Do that every single time you're having a problem, slow down and get yourself there. Well, what about the rifle? Well, guess what, guys? If you're gonna shoot a carbine, if you've got a home defense carbine, and I haven't talked about this guy on the channel too much. Again, I'm not the biggest gear guy in the world. I think you know your, your shooting skills are much more important, but this is Dunwin, um, my HK MR556A1. Um, it's got you know uh, a Geisley trigger in it, Geisley rails. Um, has a Surefire uh, dual scout on it, you know, an M600 dual fuel scout on it. It's riding a Geisley 1.93 mount with a, um, a primary arms Raptor with the access reticle on it. Like this very much. It's got a, a, an Ambi uh, Geisley charging handle on it. And I really love this rifle. It's kind of a heavy pig, but I love it. Um, somebody's gonna ask me about the name Dunwin, so I'll tell you that. It's, it's from Welsh folk folklore. You know, I like to, to name my uh, carry guns because I'm a weirdo. So if you want to look up Dunwin, I'll put a link in below. Um, Cool part of Dunwin is, is that uh, in Welsh folklore, uh, when Dunwin was drawn, it ignited in flame, and if you were a person of noble character using it for noble things, then that flame would help you in your endeavor. But if you were ignoble and were using it for wrong means and wrong things, then that flame would consume you instead, and so that's why I named him Dunwin. So, uh, anyways, same thing, grip the gun. So how do I grip this gun? Well, the difference here, if I put this guy down real quick, all I do to grip a carbine when it's time to do that. Again, same thing, grip the gun, sight the gun, trigger the gun. Pistol, I do this, right? So guess what? Now I take all those same things and all I do is pull this back here. That's really all I do. I can step forward a little bit more, get a little bit more into it if I need to, if I want to, to hold it. 
But really, it's the same thing. If I'm here and my, my hips and my shoulders, I always say eyes, nose, shoulders, hips, and toes all towards the target. I'm gonna do basically the same thing with a carbine. I'm gonna go from this to come back here, drop that shoulder in, press forward into the gun. Let's put a gun in our hands and see what it looks like. The same thing here. So again, I have the forward part. I don't like holding on to the magazine well. I want a little bit further out. That's why my pressure switch is out there like that. This grips the, pistol, the, the gun and pulls that back into my shoulder. Gun comes up to my shoulder. I look through my sighting system. I do get a cheek well by smooshing my cheek down. Now, I'm gonna show you this here. Still a safe direction. Listen, with this here, I don't chicken wing this out. I tuck this down and in and tuck this into me. That gives me the best grip on a carbine. Now, of course, the cool part of a carbine rifle, however you wanna say that, is that this rifle here weighs uh, about nine pounds, all things considered with everything on it, and the trigger is about a five pound trigger. So it's much easier to trigger the gun straight to the rear. So we do the exact same thing. We grip the gun, we sight the gun. Well, of course, I'm running a low power variable optic. So easy day, it, it's just like a red dot sight on a pistol, right? I press this into me here, flip the safety off, straight to the rear without de uh, deflecting my sights, without disturbing my sight picture. Okay, cool, got it, grip the gun, sight the gun, trigger the gun. Great, gotta reset my trigger this way. Set, flip my manual safety on. Let's put our Mantis unit on and get a few shots here with this. Oh yes, the Mantis will work just fine on your carbine as well. I gotta tell you, I have a hard time keeping my carbine doing the things that I want it to do. You can see, got it mounted up top there. And let's get back to filming a little bit, shall we? What we have to do here is go into our settings, go to the rifle, I've got that set to my rifle, back to training, and rock and roll and we can see the exact same things. We wanna see the gun, sight the gun, grip the gun. So grip the gun, got it gripped, got every bit of grip that I want on there. Sight the gun, flip safety off, trigger the gun. Okay, about a 70, you can see. Not as good with a carbine as I am with my pistol. Grip the gun, sight the gun, trigger the gun. Okay, at 70s there, grip the gun, sight the gun trigger the gun, okay? So what you can see there is I'm doing the same thing. Now, I can work that at a little bit of speed if I want, say that I'm coming down here from a low ready, and I say, okay, my safety's on, got all that, shooter ready, stand by, flip up, see the sights, press the trigger, still getting in that same bit. So, what am I doing this week? Going back to the basics, man. Grip the gun, sight the gun, trigger the gun. Get the gun to do what you want it to do by gripping the gun in the way that will help you control the recoil the best, that will help you put the trigger, put the sights where you want them, press the trigger and let the bullet go. And in doing that, when you start having problems, you will get better. So, simplify it this week, couple hundred reps. I just want you to think when you get started. Grip the gun, sight the gun, trigger the gun. Hope it helps.